Yeah, what's up, everybody? This is the MMA Pocket on behalf of MMA Opinion. Um, joining me today is UFC veteran, all round good guy, Mark Munoz. Mark, thanks for doing this. You're a diamond. Mm-hmm. Um, how's things? What's been going on? Uh, things are good, man. Just, uh, you know, I'm coaching all the time, coaching some fighters and coaching wrestling and um, living life, man. So I saw good. on your uh, I saw on your Instagram your daughter got married recently. That must have made you feel old. <laughs> yeah, man, I might be a grandpa here soon, man. So yeah, yeah, uh, it's crazy. Congrats, man. Um, uh, thanks. Anyway, let's start with the here and now. You've gone from a uh, fighter to film star, as it were. Um, tell me about your latest project, Lumpia with a Vengeance. I hope I got yeah. that pronunciation right. <laughs> it came out yeah. in October last year, I believe. Yeah, so we uh, we wrapped last year, and um, it's gone through post production now, and um it's uh, ready to be picked up by a distributor so um we're talking to sony pictures at the moment and we're uh, seeing how how that goes you know so um uh it's uh, it's crazy you know i never thought i'd <laughs> you know be a lead role in a movie you know but uh but yeah i mean that's uh that's what we're doing now well, that follows me on to our next question, actually, because some people will probably know this already, but you're no stranger to the big screen because you've been in a couple of films already. Um, yeah. But this is like your first leading role, is that right? And you're producing this one as well, is that correct? Yeah, so we're uh, we're producing this, Team Munoz is, and um, yeah, this is my first lead lead role. So, um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens, man. I mean... Um, well, good luck with it all. I mean... Um, Starring opposite Danny Trejo as well. That must have been some experience. Oh, man. It, we had an instant connection already, too, because um, there was a scene where he was throwing a taquito and I was throwing a lumpia. And in our first scene, he throws a taquito, I throw a lumpia, and they actually hit each other, which, <laughs> you know, that's... That's, that's a what perfect scene, no? Yeah. One so time. Like, man, that's, man, we were meant to be, man. So, you know... I mean, uh, your next movie, I need to be in it. <laughs> Definitely, man. I mean, he's still yeah. going. He's still going at his ripe old age. So fair play to him. I mean, yeah. that's right. Um, so I have to ask you about your first film role. It's something to do with being an elf, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, my very first one was Here Comes the Boom. You know, really. I mean, that's that was the first real role that I that I did and it, you know I was I was going getting thrown by Kevin James and you got and, to play uh, yourself which has got to be a bonus well I mean I got to play fighter and I got I didn't get to play myself but I played a, a Mexican fighter um before he got into the UFC so um so that was my actually real first real role on on the silver screen or the big screen so is that something that's in your future then? Is that is that where your future lies in production and acting and I don't know. We'll see. You know, I'm just kind of walking through doors and seeing what opportunities lie ahead and you know, whatever 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 happens, happens, you know. So um I'm doing well coaching right now, you know, so kind of seeing what what um what the future holds really. Yeah, so going back to your MMA career, it's been six years, I think, now since you retired nearly. Um, yeah. Do you, do you regret that decision or is it the right thing? Do you still think it's the right choice? No, it was the right choice, man. I, I uh, you know, looking back at it, you know, um, you know, because cause my career, I mean, I was, I was for three to four years, I was like knocking on the door of a, of a world championship, you know, and, you know, to be a world champion and, you know, to, you know, because of a lot of things where I was running a gym, coaching all the fighters, cornering them, and and you know, trying to be a, an elite mixed martial artist myself while while having a wife and four kids, and running a gym and coaching all my little wrestlers, it was it was very tough. Yeah, you I know? can imagine. Yeah, um, uh, you know, so I mean, looking back at it, you know, when my son said, "Dad, I want to." I want to quit soccer and baseball and I want to wrestle and I want you to coach me. Um, I was like, you know what? Let's go. You know, so um, I had to retire um, because I always say family first, you know. And so, course, yeah. 
you know, my son now is at Arizona State on on scholarship and uh, you know full ride. So um, he's he's doing well there. His actually his first dual meet is today um, at at um, Oklahoma University. So um, can't wait to watch that here pretty soon. Awesome stuff. Um, so what was it like winning that retirement fight against Luke Barnett in the Philippines? What was that? What was that experience like for you? Oh, it was crazy, man. Uh, just to be in the Philippines, where it all started for my for my family. Um, I still have four generations of my family still living there, um, and it it was amazing, man. You know, um, I I got to visit with my family and you know got to eat with them in their house and um, just man, it's it's crazy. Um, and and just walking around town, it, you know, people. I couldn't walk five steps before everyone start started like chasing me down and, you know, saying Mark, 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 picture, <laughs> picture. You know, so it's like, wow, it was, the, the the amount of support I have in the Philippines is is amazing. So living the life, man. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, your fight against Chris Lieben, I think, in two thousand and eleven. That was actually the first. Uh, five round non-title fight fight in the UFC. Do you feel that that was a landmark for your career and, and for the UFC in general, really? Yeah, I mean, um, I knew that that fight wouldn't have gone five rounds though, you know, <laughs> but um, but yeah, it, it was uh, the first five round nine t- non-title fight. So um, it was uh, it was a great fight, you know. I mean, I never had anybody, never had anybody quit on the stool on me before, you know. <laughs> But yeah. um, that's what he did. So, um, so yeah, he said no mas. <laughs> and that's a tough man to make quit as well. So fair play for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that fight, that fight was actually in England as well. Obviously, yeah. where I'm from. What was, what's it? I know you fought in England a couple of times, actually. Um, yeah. What's it like fighting over here in Britain? Oh, I loved it. I love it there. I mean, you. Good answer. Yeah, the people over there, your your people are amazing. They're. Great fight fans, um, very, uh, very energetic, um, you know, very um, passionate, very passionate about the sport, you know, so. Definitely, um, yeah. I actually, um, you know, got to train with uh, Luke after our fight. He trained with us. Um, and Michael Bisping came to my gym as well. Um, so I had uh, quite a few guys from Great Britain come over. And, and join the team so um so yeah it was I, lo- I love i love england i love great britain it's it's a great <laughs> great country top answer man um yeah. so what's your uh what's your standout moment then from your fighting career like ufc or otherwise just in general the the most pivotal moment oh man um let's see i would have to say <clears throat> You know, when I got knocked out by Chris Weidman, that was a very low point in my life. Um, because after that fight, he fought for the title and won the title, right? And so um, I accepted that fight on on four weeks' notice. And usually, usually, um, you know, I get a fight. You know, I have about three to four months to get ready, you know. But uh, I accepted that fight on four weeks' notice, and I was... 40 pounds overweight, you know? And so I lost that in, in four weeks, um, which was very, very tough, you know? And, uh, but I was like, you know what? This is my chance. You know, I can beat this guy. Right, and, yeah. Yeah, it just didn't go my way, you know? So um, after that fight, you know, I, um, you know, during, during training, I actually broke my foot as well. Had to tape my foot. And then in the back when I was warming up, my foot was taped. And then the commission came out and they said, hey, you can't tape your foot like that, um, you know, which was kind of support on my on my foot. I was like, ah, oh, dang it. You know, and so <laughs> going into the going into the octagon, uh, I mean, my my the outside of my foot, my fifth metatarsal was broken and I didn't know it. I thought it was just hurt. Mm. Uh, I fought on a broken foot as well. So that was a low point. And so after my fight. I got an x-ray and they said, I have a broken foot, you know, I fought on a broken foot and, and then they said I had a suspension of, of four months or three months, you know? And so 
which was more than that because I had to be in the cast and um, and I when I couldn't be able to like train for like six months and then I wouldn't have been able to fight within a year, you know. So and that was that was kind of that was kind of drastic for me because I owned a gym and you know my fighting was kind of subsidizing the gym, you know. Yeah. So, you know, that and my bills and my family and providing for my family, I was like, man, I don't know how I'm going to do this, you know? So, so all that mounted stress and me not fighting, I mean, I, I just, I went to, I went to food, you know, um, yeah. for comfort and I gained a lot of weight. I mean, you could, it's documented on, um, online, you can see it and gained about 70 pounds and uh accepted a fight against Tim Boach and lost that weight in about 5 months and came back in the in the best shape of my life and uh beat Tim Boach so that was a pivotal moment in my career right there um you know so being motivational to... really that if if anything that loss actually made you better in a way yeah i mean i mean i i, I was actually at a really really low time in my life um then and it was it was pretty bad you know i mean i was kind of secluding myself and you know i would come home keep to myself even and i was still reading my kids books and trying, still trying to be dad and husband yeah. but um it was still hard you know but uh you know there's people that actually do that right now you know i don't know if i mean uh, people might be going through just just things like that you know you know losing a job or or you know having a, a stroke or a heart attack or something you know and they're just kind of going through life you know not not thinking that they can thrive anymore afterwards you know but you know i'm here i'm here as a living testimony to let people know that you can definitely thrive through you know if you're living if you're breathing you can yeah. definitely you can definitely improve your situation. I think so, people need to hear sort of stuff like that, especially in these unprecedented times as well, when everything's up in the air for, for a lot of people, you know? Um, sure. I mean, I know it's the same in America as it is here, but no one really knows whether they're coming or going at the moment. So Yeah, man, for it's, sure. Uh, but yeah, um, so on from that, you're obviously known as one of the good guys of MMA. And <laughs> uh, at the minute, Wonderboy Thompson's got the title of the NMF. So is there any plans to come and fight him and get your title back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I love Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, man. He, that guy is awesome. You know, I mean, everybody loves him. Um, but, uh, but man, there's only one nice guy. That's your guy. belt, man. That's, That's your me. belt. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. Um, you know, he'd have to come up and fight me. You know, I, I'm not going to go down to 170. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe, maybe 2021 is the year you get your belt back, man. There you go. Never there say go. never. That's right. That's right. So, um, yeah, so you sold your gym that you owned a few years ago now and just to concentrate on coaching. So how's that going now? How's the coaching life? Uh, it's great, man. I mean, I'm I'm coaching at the training lab, which is um, roughly about 20 miles away from my, from my hometown. Um, you know, I got the likes of, you know, TJ Dillashaw, Cub Swanson, uh, Juan Archuleta, and a bunch of up and comer up and coming guys that are going through the gym and you know it's it's great you know i love i love coaching coaching those guys and coaching them up and um being there in in, in their development and um i'm also coaching at my wrestling club um here at a local high school that i that i'm the head coach at as well so um i get to coach kids between five to 18 years old and um get to develop them not only on the map but also in life you know so um that's the type of stuff that i love to do you know i, mean, I was i was a coach before i got into mma anyways you know and so it's yeah crazy how full circle it comes you know comes around and goes around again you know so um so i'm back to coaching again um before i got into the um, uh, the MMA game and and now I'm back at it so it's uh it's a lot of fun for me 
So they're like giving back to the community and stuff and like your local area, that's obviously something that's very important to you, yeah? Yeah, man. I mean, I, I have an anti-bullying campaign too because I got bullied when I was younger and um, I'm able to speak to uh, to kids and speak into their, into their hearts and souls because a lot of them just don't know where to go, you know, because they're getting bullied and, um, you know, I get to, I get to, you know, be there for, for, for those students that are getting bullied, you know, so I got an anti-bullying campaign that, that I, I feel like have saved lives, you know, um, and uh, which is pretty awesome, you know, I get to, I get to do that and use my level of influence to be able to impact kids and steer them in the right direction rather than hurting themselves or trying to take their own lives, you know, so um, so I get to, I get to do that as well. And I do military tours all around the world, um, teaching our military men and women how to finish people with their hands, you know, <laughs> and, and that. uh, so I get to do that too. And, you know, I do some, I do some speaking for churches and for, uh, local organizations and local businesses as well, um, about leadership and, um, about faith, about, about um just self-development and all that stuff you know so um so yeah i'm uh busy man a busy man yeah I'm busy. I'm busy man so and i got wrestling camps in the summer and clinics throughout the year and you know so yeah so, so is that sort of stuff the whole moment how is how is like the covid sort of affected all your camps and um, colleges and yeah covid has affected it quite quite badly actually um you know i get to i get to coach the fighters still because we COVID test every week you know so i get to do that but um but the schools have been shut down you know so there's no contact sports um yeah. happening right now uh so that's um it makes it pretty difficult to be able to do things like that um i put people's um tuitions on hold because they're not resting right now and so that puts a damper on my income you know so um awesome, so yeah i mean it's uh it's tough during this time man you know but uh but hey you know it is what it is and you know we gotta gotta fight through it and you know we'll get through it well fingers crossed for you my man um Thank i won't you. take up too much more of your time mark just uh, before we go is there any Mark Munoz exclusive for me? Anything that maybe we don't know yet or anything in the pipeline? Uh, well, I mean, you can watch the Lumpia movie. I mean, um, you can download it on uh, lumpiamovie.com uh, because right now we can't go to movie theaters. <laughs> Best so that put, to get a plug in, yeah. Best yeah, that put, a, that put a damper on my, uh, my movie <clears throat> with COVID happening, you know, so... But, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see if it um, gets in movie theaters, you know, here uh, pretty soon. So uh, hopefully it does. But if not, then just be looking out for my next uh, project. <laughs> I'll definitely be looking out, man. Well, thank you so much for your time, Mark. I appreciate that. Yeah, no um, problem, man. You have a great day, man. You too. Thank you so much, sir. Goodbye. All right. Bye-bye.